This is a movie review. This is the 1962 released film called Some People. It's directed by Clive Donner. And it's uh, John Aldridge responsible for the screenplay. The cast. Kenneth Moore plays Mr. Smith. Ray Brooks plays Johnny. Annette Wills plays Anne. Anne is Mr. Smith's daughter and becomes Ray's girlfriend. David Andrews plays Bill, a close friend of Johnny. Angela Douglas plays Terry. She's a friend of Johnny and Bill. And then we have Bert, played by David Hemmings. And uh, some uh, supporting roles now. Timothy Nightingale plays Tim, uh, one of the musicians. And Frankie Diamond plays Jimmy, another uh, musician, the drummer. And then finally, uh, Johnny's parents. Johnny's father is played by Harry H. H. Corbett. And then uh, his mother is played by Fanny Carby. So my review of some people then. It's the swinging 60s, 1962. The setting is in Brighton. And... Uh, we meet three young bikers. Um, they're probably are late teens. Um, one of them, Johnny, works at a timber yard. Maybe all of them do, but it's not per, uh, obvious uh, from the first frames. Uh, the other two guys are Bert and Bill. Uh, one of those uh, is played by David Hemmings, a very young David Hemmings. Uh, Johnny is played by Ray Brooks. Uh, who I saw quite a bit uh, actually on TV uh, in the 60s was uh, I think he was in um, the very famous drama uh, Kathy Come Home about uh, a one parent family anyway uh, after work is an issue for these lads uh, but they have got their bikes and at the weekends particularly they love going on um, bike rides and it gets competitive well on this particular day they're joined by Terry uh, who's uh, um, a girl who's sort of attached herself to the group she doesn't seem to have a particular boyfriend although Johnny is the most popular and anyway they decide that they're going to go somewhere on the bikes it develops into a bit of a race then uh, inadvertently a truck uh, does a strange manoeuvre on the road which forces um, a bill to uh, quickly take evasive action to avoid a collision and him and uh, Bert then sort of avoid colliding with each other and end up in a ditch. Consequence of this is uh, they're put in front of the magistrate's court, the three of them, and they're fined and they lose their license. So now they've got the additional issue of trying to uh, overcome the boredom. Um, they spend some time down at the uh, bus station, which seems to be a place where they can peruse the young girls and have fun. Uh, there's one scene which is particularly amusing um, when uh, one of these uh, photo booths uh, and uh, one of the lads tries to impose himself on a photo op inside the booth with two girls. It's all in fairly uh, uh, jovial fun. and So we get a picture really of these lads who are a little bit sort of in need of some structure. Uh, and anyway, they're, they're, they're short of cash obviously. And they decide to, uh, they can't go in for the coffee bar because they haven't got any money for coffee. So they end up going to the local youth club. And uh, there's, uh, m most of the kids there are younger. Uh, but Ray, uh, Ray Brooks, who's uh, quite a musical sort, in fact they all are, but he's particularly adept at piano. He sort of invites himself to start to play the piano a bit in a sort of uh, rock and roll Jerry Lay Lewis style but the youth club leader uh, comes in in a bit of a temper and uh, closes that outlet out 
uh, and then they end up um, shifting to the uh, church and as soon as they got in that uh, uh, Johnny's up now with the church organ and he starts to deliver another uh, eloquent piece and just as the uh, the vicar arrives uh, and, and as helper at the at the church uh, Mr Smith played by Kenneth Moore uh, arrives in the nick of time and offers a, 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 an opportunity for the three boys um, to actually be creative in a positive way uh, and come to the uh, church hall uh, uh, church youth club I think and bring their gear along uh, which they duly uh, uh, do and we see that uh, they play guitars and uh, they are also, of course, uh, Johnny plays the piano, although he hasn't got one. And so they turn up the next day uh, uh, along with uh, the young girl uh, and there they meet Anne, uh, Smith's daughter. And it's immediate that she's taken a, a, a shine to young Johnny, most of the girls are, and um, um, we then uh, get uh, early signs of a romance. Anyway, their playing is of a, a reasonable level, and it impresses Anne and also Mr Smith. And the two other uh, young lads there um, uh, also are into music, and uh, uh, Frankie Diamond, he's got a set of drums, so the following day he turns up with drums. And then there's uh, Tim, who's uh, quite a sort of um, musical boffin. Uh, and he manages to uh, make some sort of keyboard instrument. And so they swell into a five piece, and it becomes a, a very good outlet. However, um, the Terry... Uh, uh, takes over the singing um, and um, this then starts to create a slight bit of tension between her and Anne uh, about over the attention of uh, Johnny. Um, alongside this we get some discussion about the merits of the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. Now in the 60s this became uh, very popular in secondary schools and uh, young people were uh, advised and uh, to get involved in this. It was seen as an opportunity for young people to be uh, creative, to do things that uh, promoted community service, have value, and they also developed uh, skills, uh, hobbies that were uh, beneficial to them, possibly uh, leading towards uh, job outlets. But the problem was that it had an image problem. It was very much seen as a sort of uh, an activity or activities that sort of uh, middle class children uh, got involved in. Those who, who, who are from slightly better households. And so the sort of working class youth uh, were rather reluctant to get involved in this because it, it, it actually uh, indicated um, a falseness and they wanted to be seen as really hard and rough and ready and not into that sort of thing. So it took some time for it to really t uh, uh, take off with the group and in fact um, what happens is that Bill uh, resents the idea that he should be involved in this and so he's sort of discarded from the group to an extent which again creates some friction and uh, um, within the plot um, and uh, basically though um, it, it, let's, let's move on to some of the uh, what happens next really well the, the we have the increasing opportunities for uh, practicing uh, musically. We have the rift that develops between uh, Bill and the rest of the group. We've got uh, two young girls uh, vying for the attention of the uh, handsome Johnny. And uh, we also have 
um, the issue uh, regarding um, uh, how they're going to move forward. And uh, uh, so there's quite a lot in this uh, plot. In fact, I found it a very, very appealing film. Um, you know, we're talking about uh, adolescent relationships. We're talking about um, the impact of peer group and conflicts within them. We're also uh, looking at uh, the creative aspects of, of, of the opportunities within uh, uh, that age group. And uh, we're, there were also uh, a number of scenes that uh, I, I've, I feel I want to mention now as memorable to this film at this particular time. Uh, I remember early in the 60s, um, with regard to clothing, it was trendy to buy a, a, a pair of jeans and then uh, to make them skin tight to accentuate uh, your body, particularly for the girls, you would sit in a bath of cold water to shrink fit the jeans. We have an incident of that. Uh, and then we also have um, an instance of uh, um, uh, the council house versus the uh, uh, private house, the residential house. Uh, and, for example, when her, her father live in sort of more affluent uh, neighbourhoods, whereas the boys are very much from uh, r r working class uh, uh, environments. And then we, uh, we also capture some of the um, local haunts. There's a great scene uh, where Johnny and Anne are down by the river, and in the background is the Bristol Suspension Bridge, which was a very famous uh, landmark at the time. And then there's the issue about uh, going to a football match. And there's a discussion between uh, uh, Johnny and uh, Bill about the, the merits of being part of the sporty group uh, at school. And if you were good at sport, you had made it. Uh, but if you weren't good at sport and not academic, you were almost discarded uh, as being really uh, of little sort of substance in life. And uh, um, the, the, there's also um, the issue about um, the lecture that was handed out by the um, magistrates uh, early on well, after the um, offence of dangerous uh, riding, very much akin to how... Um, the adults at the time viewed these ruffians on motorbikes and uh, uh, very uh, apt for the time. The band, uh, whilst rehearsing, um, I noted that uh, at one point when they were playing this song, they'd adopted the uh, movements of the shadows who were particularly big at that time, being Cliff Richards. Uh, uh, backing group, but they became famous in their own right and had this style of, of moving in tandem with each other with their guitars. And uh, then Harry H. Corbett makes an appearance as uh, Johnny's uh, father, and there's this rather uh, sad scene when uh, Johnny meets up with his father in the pub. Uh, and he rarely has any uh, time with his father. There's hardly any talk. But in the in the pub, his father uh, tends to describes how this has been missing in their relationship, and he wants uh, to have a sort of drink with his son to man him up. And uh, of course, Johnny really just doesn't want to be a part of this macho let's get drunk scenario um, his father is clearly an alcoholic um, and then we have the situation where the the romance between jo Johnny and Anne uh, gets blown off course when she uh, makes it clear that she's going to be going to college and that she really wants to take the heat out of the relationship and Johnny is rather frustrated and angry 
um, because he has some very warm feelings for the girl and can't understand why they can't maintain that closeness. And so we get a, a picture of how adolescent friendships can, can break up uh, quite quickly. And uh, then there's the exclusion of Bill through the Duke of Edinburgh and he can't cope being out of the, uh, the loop, so to speak, and comes down to the um, church hall one night with some of his tough guys and it ends up uh, as a brawl between them and the band with uh, um, both sets uh, really getting uh, injured, not seriously, but uh, certainly some bumps and bruises can be seen. And this uh, um, uh, a very indicative of how um, that gang sort of style behaviour was quite prevalent in the early 60s. We, those who lived in the UK will recall the mods and the rockers, um, which um, was uh, clearly portrayed in the movie A Quadrophenia. I found that the role of Kenneth Moore was rather a minuscule, um, although Johnny does uh, have a heart to heart with him uh, about how to move forward. Uh, without being too obvious about his interest in the daughter. Uh, but after the uh, confrontation with Bill, uh, Johnny uh, manages to reacquaint himself with the group and is accepted back into the club. And uh, um, well, there's a very poignant statement near the end where um, I think it's Smith who points out that uh, some kids can go astray and others can uh, just about find their way through the difficulties of adolescence. And that's really probably what the film was all about. Uh, filmed in colour, um, it's a really nice film. Um, it hasn't got any extravagant crime, delinquency or whatever. It touches on this, but generally the kids uh, are pretty sound uh, personality wise just struggling to find their way in the world at this particular time and I really suggest you get to look at it it's called Some People and it was released in 1962